Ken, obviously the, the headline is the mugshot, the booking, the surrendering. But what's next? What are the legal maneuvers next? What are the dates to look for? And what exactly is this former president facing, especially with all the other different trials and, and indictments that he's dealing with? But in Fulton County, there are so many different co-defendants, so many different mugshots, so many different screaming headlines. But as Joe, Joe points out, uh, What's what's the main what, what's the main issue here facing this former president? Well, the main issue is is to Joe's point the avalanche of criminal charges, the dizzying array of proceedings. It's hard for people to get their arms around this. Most of us have never been defendants in a single white collar criminal indictment, let alone four. Uh, these kinds of cases they take a lot of mental energy to to devote. Uh, to, to defending oneself, even if you're not even not devoting substantial time to your own defense, you have to consult with your lawyers. You have to be in courtrooms. Now, look, this Fulton County case, even though uh, co-defendant Kenneth Cheesebro has asked for a speedy trial and uh, the DA, Fonnie yeah. Willis, has said she's ready to go to trial in October, Donald Trump's not going to do that. And nobody I talk to thinks that this is going to be the first case or even the second case to go to trial among the four. But on Monday, guys, in Washington, D.C., uh, there's going to be a hearing before Judge Tanya Chutkan, and she's going to set a trial date in the other election interference case brought by Jack Smith. And that's the one that most people I talk to think may go to trial uh, as, as, as early as next summer because Donald Trump's the only defendant. It's less complex. Uh, they're ready to go. And, mm. and uh, so this is going to get real <laughs> rather quickly. Uh, and, and then just back to the Fulton County, the mugshot situation, I think what's so interesting about what happened last night is that, you know, the Fulton County sheriff, an elected Democrat, uh, told our Blaine Alexander that he wasn't sure until the last minute, really, whether he was going to go forward with that mugshot. Because as you recall, in all the other bookings, uh, two federal and one in New York, uh, authorities determined that they didn't need to do a mugshot because at the purpose of a mugshot is to, uh, you know, to be able to publicize a person's image if they flee. Well, that wasn't going to happen here. And besides, there are a million and a half photos of Donald Trump. So the federal government, the, the marshals use an existing photo for the booking photo. In the end, the Fulton County folks decided they were going to treat him like any other defendant in that respect. And that was what was so jarring about that procedure. The other, the other bookings and arraignments took place in courthouses. This one was in the Fulton County Jail, a notorious jail that is, you know, the, the stuff of rap lyrics. Uh, it's under federal investigation. It's a nasty place where inmates have died under questionable circumstances. Mm. Now, he wasn't in the cells, but, you know, he had to go through that place uh, where there's signs saying, you know, inmates this way. And, and he had to go through the indignities. Uh, I believe, I don't believe he actually was weighed. We're told that, um, that his staff filled out that form in advance, which is why he's listed at yeah. a height of 6'3", 215, which probably hasn't been since, uh, since the Wharton School of Finance, as he said there. Uh, but nonetheless, a sobering uh, a moment, uh, really different from the other cases. And whatever happens in this Fulton County case, it's, it's a reminder that, you know, this is the one that he can't pardon himself on, that he, he, he has maybe less control of, uh, and, and it's a bit of a wild card, guys. Well, it, it was a very sobering moment. I mean, the, one of the few moments of levity provided by Donald Trump's staff, self-reported weight and height. I've stood next to him many times. I'm about 6'4". Maybe he's 6'1". Maybe he's six one and a half, six two. He's a good bit shorter. Uh, but he, he, his staff reported him at 6'3", and uh, ended a fighting weight of 215. That would be like if my staff reported me. Uh, describe Mr. Scarborough's appearance. He looks a lot like Robert Redford in 1974. <laughs> uh, you know, wildly, wildly off. So I, I, I'm not going to tell you where uh, the over-under mm. is uh, on Donald Trump's weigh-in, uh, but it's a good... Uh, Let's just say it's a good 70 or 80 pounds higher than what the staff reported. But, Willie, I'm sure you would describe me as looking like Robert Redford in about yeah. 74. But, but I don't know about Butch Donald Cassidy Trump at Sundance 250. Kid era. Yeah, exactly. Right in there. Yes.
yes. right in there. Yes. With or without the mustache, yes. I, I like it with the stash. I also like the self-reporting of strawberry blonde hair. I thought that was a nice flourish, <laughs> flourish as well instead of, instead of just a saying blonde. Strawberry blonde. Yeah. He really oh went for God. it. He really went for it. Yeah. Um, yeah, he also. He went there. He also can mm -hmm. use the bail bondsman like anybody else would. Fosters uh, bail bonds in Lawrenceville, Georgia, where you pay 10 percent. His bond was two hundred thousand dollars. Not sure exactly what he paid, but it was in those ways that the, the ways you just described. Once you got through the motorcade and he got there, it was pretty quick and routine in the way these things go. I'm curious about trial dates here, Ken, because Kenneth Cheesebro, one of the co-defendants and attorney for Donald Trump, asked put in a motion for a speedy trial and D.A. Fonnie Willis came back and said, sure, how's October 23rd? Let's get this thing going. Um, what, how do we interpret that move? Uh, well, that was a be careful what you wish for moment. Uh, Fonnie Willis is ready to go to trial. It, you know, she's been investigating this thing for two years. Presumably they have not just investigated the case, but prepared their trial strategy, considered their witness list. But here's the thing. Donald Trump is not going to go to trial in October. He's fighting. He doesn't want a speedy trial in this case. And a lot of legal experts I talked to fear that because of the number of defendants in this case in Fulton County, it really could get bogged down. There is a racketeering case that Fonnie Willis is prosecuting right now where it's taken eight months and they still haven't picked a jury. Uh, so it, it, this, uh, unfortunately, this office doesn't have a great track record of getting cases to trial quickly. And, you know, the lawyers in this one are going to take every opportunity, apparently, except for Mr. Cheesebro, to slow things down. Because for Mr. Trump, delay is victory. Uh, in all these cases, and that's been his strategy. Uh, he's just hoping that he can just play this out long enough to somehow get elected president. And even if he can't make this particular Fulton County case go away, there's a good chance that the Justice Department would say, you cannot continue with the prosecution of a sitting president. Uh, meanwhile, he could make the other federal cases go away. So, I mean, we've been building towards this moment, but now it's really, it's here, right? Where the choice for Donald Trump is get elected president or potentially go to prison. Yeah, this is about his freedom at this point.